Hello everyone. Research objectives is an important component of most research processes. Uh, formulation of research objectives is an important part of the research process. Without clear uh, research objectives, carrying out the research process is quite difficult and in many cases research studies they do not have clear research objectives often lead often result in the failure of the whole research project so in this presentation i would like to discuss what are research objectives why do we need research objectives and how do um, actually we formulate research objectives or what are the processes of formulation or what are the considerations of formulating research objectives. So let us first begin with the what of it or the what question. So what are research objectives? Um, generally research objectives, uh, research um, studies in social sciences are undertaken in response to one or more central research questions or research hypotheses. And research objectives actually are formulated in order to explore possible answers to the central research questions or to accept or, re or reject research hypotheses. So the objective of the objectives or the aim of the objectives is actually um, to find answers to our research questions or to accept or reject our research hypotheses. So, so formulation of research questions are generally in more qualitative research studies while research hypotheses are um, included more in quantitative large-scale survey studies um, or in experimental studies. So research objectives are achieved, generally they are deemed to achieve or they are expected to, uh, we as researchers expect to achieve our objectives when the research process results in finding possible answers to the research questions or in the acceptance or the clear acceptance or rejection of our research hypotheses. Now, why is it that we need research objectives or why is it that we need objectives to be included in our research project? Uh, well, the, the, the inclusion of research objectives actually gave clear direction to the research process. Without uh, having clear objectives at the uh, beginning of the research process or maybe there are certain objectives that change during the research process in more explorative type, type of studies. But whatever the case, um, having objectives actually gives clear direction to the research process. Without clear objectives, uh, we won't be able to have the clear direction to the research process. And subsequently, it focuses the research study. Then it brings in objectivity to the research process because we stick to, the, uh, to, to actually achieve our objectives in the light of the kind of data that we are, are, are collecting and the kind of analysis that we are doing. So, the having clear objectives makes the research process more objective. Then it also helps in uh, specifying our research design because our research designs and the considerations such as the formulation or, or selection of sample, the data collection and analysis procedures, um, which are important components of the research design are actually in response to the kind of objectives that we have. Um, and so this uh, having clear research objectives also helps us in the formulation or the specification of our research design. Then it helps in the organization of discussion as a result of our findings. 
and the analysis of the data that has come through the interpret it also the clear research objectives also help us in the interpretation at the interpretation stage of our data and also at the conclusion stage of our study because we conclude um, um, at all of these stages, whether we are formulating our research design or whether we are collecting or analyzing data or whether we are concluding um, our study, on each of these stages we have to actually reflect back on uh, our objectives. And all of these subsequent steps are, in the, are conducted in the light of our research objectives. So that is actually the why of the objectives. Or in other words, why is it important to have clear objectives in our research studies? Then we move on to the how of it. In other words, the question is how actually to formulate our research objectives. Well, the first thing is that research objectives should be actually should actually represent the research topic. In other words, um, research objectives should be formulated in the light of the research topic. If they are not representing the research topic, they will not be very useful objectives because the objectives are actually in response to exploring our research topic. So that is uh, the first thing that we need to take care of when we are formulating our research objectives, that our research objectives are actually in response to and they are clearly representing our research topic. The second thing is that research gap identification. Um, our research objectives should be in the light of the research gap that we have identified um, through or mainly through previous literature review or maybe through reflection or through critical thinking or through discussion. So our research objectives then are formulated keeping in view the gap in our understanding regarding a particular research phenomena that we want to explore further. Then critical analysis of the existing knowledge and research gap. It's not just the identification of gap or the, the identification of, um, of actually uh, previous studies, but also analyzing them critically. Uh, critical analysis of uh, the previous uh, knowledge and, the, and the, during the process of identification of gap will help us what our research objectives should be. Then peer review will also help us in the formulation of our research objectives. Peer review, in the case of research students, um, uh, senior colleagues and supervisors or their teachers might be very helpful in, in actually refining and giving critical feedback on the research objectives that, that junior researchers or student research, researchers have identified. So peer review is an important process of um, actually substantiating our research objectives, whether they are actually in the focus of our research topic, where they, whether they are representing our research topic or not. Then time and resources available will also be considerations that we need to take care of. Sometimes if we have very broad research objectives, um, that are not feasible through the kind of research that we are conducting or in the time that, that is available to us or the resources that we have at our disposal. In that case, um, they will not be very useful objectives. So while formulating objectives, it is important to take care, to take into consideration the resources that are available to us as researchers and the time that is available and also the kind of skills and knowledge that we have as researchers, um, these are considerations that, that, uh, that should be taken into consideration while we are formulating research objectives. Then the clarity and focus, language and presentation. Research objectives should be clearly presented. They should be um, presented in language that is easily understandable and that is objective and 
the presentation, so both in terms of focus and clarity, um, we should make use of objective, clear, and focused language. Then achievable and focused, as I said um, in a previous uh, point, time, resource available. So again, objectives should be something that are achievable and that are focused. And then the how, here are some examples of how actually to formulate uh, good, useful research objectives. Um, we need to focus our research objectives. For example, uh, I have given um, these three examples of very broad or no, very non-focused kind of objective and then quite broad and lake focus and then the third one that is better focus. So if you look at the first one, um, the first objective is to compare teacher education programs in Pakistan and the UK. Now this is something that is too broad and lack focus. For example, um, what are we going to compare in the teacher education programs? Now this is something that is actually lacking that kind of, uh, of clear variables that should be reflected in our objectives. So what are we comparing in the two systems and why are we, uh, are we comparing um, these two different systems of teacher education in two, uh, two very different contexts? Um, so uh, as you can see that this kind of objective is quite broad and it, it will be very, very difficult to explore possible answer to such, such objective. Then look at the second one, which is again, uh, quite broad, leg focus, but better than the, the first one. And here is to compare initial teacher education programs in Pakistan and the UK. Now in the second one, we have focus. There is some focus. Uh, so it's not the general teacher education, it's the initial teacher education program that, that has been focused. But, but again, it is quite broad because there, in, inside initial teacher education program, what are we going to compare? And why we are comparing and things like that. So if we look at the third one, the third objective is quite focused, seems um, better focused. I shouldn't say quite focused because we can further focus this one as well. But look at this one to compare initial teacher education programs in Pakistan and the UK in terms of theory practice balance. Now, uh, we have focused it, this particular objective on a particular teacher education program. Then inside that teacher education program, which is the initial teacher education program, we are focusing on a particular aspect of the teacher education program and that is balance of theory and practice. So here we are clearer and more focused in terms of what we want to achieve. So here we want to achieve, we want to know, we want to explore whether um, there is better theory practice balance or the theoretical and practical component of the initial teacher education programs is balanced or not, or to what level this is balanced. So this particular, um, uh, the, the last objective could be further focused or subdivided into finer objectives. So this could be a main objective that could then be further divided or focused into finer objectives um, or focused on particular programs courses inside ITE programs. So initial teacher education uh, programs might further be divided into other subcategories and there you can focus on comparing the theory component between um, the ITEs of the two countries and then the practical component. Then you can also um, subdivide it in terms of exploring perceptions of teacher educators or in terms of perceptions of, let's say, student teachers or educationists or maybe educational practitioners and so on. So this is how uh, 
research objectives actually are very important. So in conclusion, we can say that formulation of good, useful, specific research objectives are very important because these research objectives help us in clearly defining the what, why, and how of the whole research process. Generally, the whole research process revolves around research objectives. As a result, more specific, clearly defined, and clearly presented research objectives and focused research objectives that are not too broad or not too narrow uh, are very, very useful in terms of carrying out our research or whole research project. Thank you very much for your time. Take care. Bye.